Welcome in, Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. Appreciate all of you hanging out with us on what is, let's be honest, a holiday for a lot of you. We are working hard here. I hope you guys had a fantastic Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I hope wherever you are across this great nation or around the world, you celebrated the 4th of July to your fullest, maybe a little bit. Maybe a few hangovers out there in the crowd today. Maybe some uh, hangovers that are still being built as you are listening to us today. I am uh, Clay Travis. He is Buck Sexton. You can go follow us on Twitter at Clay Travis, at Buck Sexton. And Buck, I was down in Atlanta, which was pretty fantastic. I went to Major League Baseball games on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm still fired up over Major League Baseball's decision to pull the All-Star game out of Atlanta. But it wasn't the Braves' fault. They did not support this in any way. And I got to be honest with you, full stadiums, I almost saw, I don't even recall seeing a mask in the entire three days, really, that I was going uh, to and from the stadium all around the battery in the Atlanta area. It felt like 100% normalcy from a sports perspective. I know you were back in New York City for the holiday. What did the city feel like? And what was your vibe on what I would say is the first holiday that felt like all the way back to March that we haven't been being lectured, oh, this is going to be a super spreader event, wait for two weeks. They even had a barbecue at the White House. Joe Biden was out eating ice cream, which seems to be the only thing that the media will almost cover him doing these days. What was your vibe in New York? Did it feel normal? It felt like the return of freedom at some level. There were lots of folks at restaurants, uh, lots of people um, out and about without masks on. I, I will say now there are only a few places where you really feel those restrictions, even still in New York City. It's gotten a lot better here. You have it in these national ride share apps still. So if you take uh, if you take any of those Uber, Lyft, any of those taxi drivers, interesting. I think it's because here in New York, there's actually a partition. There's always been a partition. So they're very uh, lax about that for the most part, because I see they they don't they don't wear them. Uh, they don't wear masks the same way you'll see uh, others. Um, and, you know, Uber will actually make you take a photo of yourself to prove you're wearing a mask. If you get if you get hit once for not being a mask wearer, they'll oh make you God. start taking a selfie to prove your mask is on. But but to your, your broader point, look, restaurants wide open. You know, the weather here was a little eh in New York over the weekend. I know people had better weather in other places or perhaps they had similar situation. But I just say this. We had a we had a Fourth of July celebration where finally it felt like people could live their lives again. And remember, Biden told us if we were good, if we were good little boys and girls and got to 70 percent vaccination rate, we didn't get to the 70 percent. But I think people are finally now when I say people, I think 80 percent of America is in a much better place about all this stuff now. I think about 20 percent of America is is still so traumatized that they're completely unreasonable about the COVID realities. I think it's maybe it's more like 10 or 15 percent, but they're a very vocal 10 or 15 percent. I, I think that's right. Um, and and I keep waiting. So Nashville had the biggest fireworks display of anywhere in the country on Sunday, yesterday. And I looked at the pictures. There was no social distancing. There was no masking. And I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm curious what you think about this, Buck, that it's going to be really hard given where the masses, I think, are going to find themselves very quickly to go back to the masking and shutdown universe. My fear is as it gets cold and the fall and the winter emerges, there are going to be some hot spots and the same people who learn that they could have draconian authority over all of us. The, the, the Gavin Newsoms and the Andrew Cuomos of the world may try to rear their ugly head and reclaim control. Do you think that a July 4th, like we just had, and this weekend travel, by the way, it was impossible to drive all over the place because people were out on the roads in massive numbers, flying in big numbers, biggest crowds in airports since March of last year when everything got shut down. Do you feel like, Big days like this help to fight the battle of we can't ever go back again. Well, can I tell you my Spirit Airlines story? Can I tell everybody what happened? Hear all about this since since you were texting about it on Friday. Yes, and and also just for everybody, we've we've got 
member a member of Congress who didn't want to celebrate the Fourth that Clay and I are going to dive into the anti-Americanism on the left for Fourth of July. We're going to dive into that momentarily, and, and there's a lot of news stories. Big thing, a big uh, kerfuffle. I don't know if that's a technical that's term. That's the perfect out, word. Out of, out of, thank you. Out of ESPN. Yes. We can talk about that in a moment. So we got a bunch of things we'll get to this hour, but I just, I'll give you the abbreviated version. So I'm sitting there. Clay and I had a, had a first two great weeks in Nashville and everyone's feeling good. We're going off the holiday weekend. And yes, the only flight, cause everyone keeps said, it's like, I don't know, Clay. People send me a text. Do you know that Spirit Airlines is a budget carrier? <laughs> yes. But I'm not, I'm not fancy. I just want to get somewhere where I have to go and I want to get time. You pick, you pick time over flight airline, right? I feel like most people probably do that. Exactly. So, so in this case, I'm, I'm flying Spirit once again. And I wasn't even going to name the, well, I guess I did in the, in the Twitter thread that went kind of viral over the weekend, but I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, I'm right next to where the, the airline attendants gather in the front, you know, as they do. And, you know, hello, welcome, and hello, how are you, and all that stuff. But instead of that, there's a lot of, like, pull your mask up, honey. Pull your mask up, honey. To And I'm not not to adults. Well, I mean, that too. But to small children. So yes. small that at one point the attendant says, can you pull your mask up? And the parent says, my kid's, like, not even two yet. And there was kind of a, okay, I guess we'll let that slide. I mean, they're telling basically two-year-olds – and remember, not that their mask is off, pull it up over your nose, because that's really going to save us. So so then we get to, I mean, you, you've seen this when you fly. This is still, uh, airlines is where you deal with this. And I always tell everybody that flying in general is like taking a time warp to the Soviet Union circa 1975 or something. The rules are stupid. We all know the rules are dumb. We have to obey them because otherwise we get into trouble. They know it's dumb. We know they know it's dumb, but yet we still have to do it. So I'm sitting there, and the people are people are coming on the plane. And then the woman who has been telling everybody to mask up pulls her mask down for the entirety of the announcements. Now, yes. Clay, I, I am not a master's in public health or a Ph.D. in epidemiology or an M.D., and I accept that. But I am pretty sure that there is no special exception for... I want to be able to say something more loudly so the virus is not being expelled. Not that I think the virus is even... They're all, by the way, they're all vaccinated. That actually, I could hear their whole conversation because I was right there. What's wild about this is all of it's a sham, and you hit it correctly, but anybody out there who's got a parent, there have been a few videos go viral of people with two-year-olds and three-year-olds or whatever it is trying to get their kids to wear their masks, and that's virtually impossible. But the moment they said, hey, you can eat or drink on the airplane and pull your mask down, any argument they were making about mask wearing was invalid. And I actually wonder, how much longer are we going to go with what I think is clearly cosmetic theater as it pertains to the airports? Because you know, Buck, you were in Nashville the only place anybody is wearing masks in like the states of Florida, Tennessee, Texas, a lot of the country now is when you go into an airport and when you walk through a terminal. So how long do we keep the cosmetic theater and the charade going? And for everyone who's listening who's in a place where they don't do this or you're not worried about this, understand that as long it's like an infection that hasn't been cleared. I think that's a pretty good analogy here. As long as some of this stuff lingers, it will come back. There will be, whether it's this flu season or, you know, this COVID season, it's combined or the next time until we all understand that this stuff, to, to borrow from you, is just cosmetic. It's just theater. It's theatrics. Yes. But but just to finish, you know, it's going to come back. But to finish what happens. So then I'm sitting there. The woman pulls her mask down to to do the whole, you know, buckle your seatbelts, which, again, it's the Soviet Union flying planes commercial is, you know, and let's just say it's spirit. They're not exactly. It's like fly the Fauci skies. You know, they're they're very strict and they don't really care. And and I I hear them then have a conversation about how we've got we got noncompliance. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And they have this and a bunch of them gather, you know, they're the stewardesses or the attendants or whatever the proper nomenclature is. They gather and they say there are three people who are not wearing their masks. And so now the whole by the way, plane, it's holiday week and plane is absolutely packed. Not not an empty seat on the whole plane. And there are three people that they say have their masks down below their noses, and they've already told them, you know, once or twice or whatever it is. But now we all have to wait there while they go through the removal procedure. They actually removed three people. How I old got, are the people that are getting removed, Buck? They're, they were in their, I'd say their 20s, 
in their 20s. So were they making a conscious stand here? Like, were they drunk? Like, how would you assess their, like, three of them, I, theoretically, they would want to go to New York, right, for the weekend. Like, what's causing all of this consternation? They had to be told, pull it up over your nose, too many times for these attendants liking. Oh, my God. And so then, because I heard the negotiation going on behind me, and they were like, no, 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 we'll wear them, we promise. We pro- Like, we're good, we promise. And it was like, sorry, third strike. Now the the air airplane people, not the attendants, they bring on these other people, not police, but like, I don't know what, I, you know, supervisor, security. And then they have to negotiate with them and have to start saying, you either come with us or the police will come and arrest you. So let me go through the whole thing. Delay the flight about 40 minutes. We're all sitting so there. So didn't the girls have to walk off like perp walk yes. style? They took, they took three of them. I, I had photos of the whole thing. They took the three of them off the plane, and then at the jetway, because remember, you have to clear the jetway before they can pull away, they're negotiating about how they want to get back on the plane. So the, so you got, I don't know, 140 people, give or take, I don't know how many are on this kind of a plane, but let, over 100 people are all sitting there for over 40 minutes because some attendants are annoyed about the lack of perfect mask compliance while they're shouting at us with their masks pulled down about mask compliance. If this wasn't the encapsulation of Fauciite madness, Clay. I don't know what is, but I did make it to New York City in one piece, so I was happy about that. So what do you think? I mean, in all honesty, what happens to those girls? Are they banned from spirit? Are they able to get on a later flight? Like, in theory, I would like to hear their story because they want to go, theoretically, right, to New York City. They're in their 20s. They have virtually no risk. They may be vaccinated for all we know. And the flight attendants just decide you weren't masking appropriately, so we're going to demand that you exit the plane after they've already boarded. They probably have checked bags, Buck. You know, they're already sitting there. What sense does any – it's it's all cosmetic kabuki theater nonsense. I would I would refuse by nullification of these orders if I work for the airline, meaning I, I, I understand people don't want to lose their jobs. I think the sane, honorable thing to do is just – Pretend like you don't see it if someone's mask is down below their nose. Who cares? Stop being crazy, Libs. That's what I want to say to them. Stop being crazy, and people need to non-comply. People in positions of authority with this stuff. You know, yeah, if someone else on the plane is going to complain, you can kind of... But I mean to call the to call in the authorities it was it was to- total madness clay. So to threaten them with arrest buck and also you're a flight attendant. Like do you think that flight attendants overwhelmingly skew corona bro uh obsessive with mask wearing or do you think to your point they've just been so hammered on this over the past year that it's 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 some sort of drunk power authority that they feel because as your point they all were vaccinated. It's not like they, they actually feel at risk. No, I think it's because they are afraid that there'll be complaints made. This is what I've been told by I have airline attendants who you know used to listen to me on my previous show, and they would write in and say that it's because they're afraid that they will get called out for lack of enforcement. And so if they don't enforce the crazy, then they become the problem and they could have professional sanctions. But look, I, overall, I don't want this to overshadow the fact that I think everybody had a really good free 4th of July weekend. We've made huge progress. We're just not done with the fight, Clay, and you know that. This isn't over. 